Hello and welcome to Sapura's Solution Showcase. What we're doing here is bringing elements of systems, radios and applications and demonstrating them in a simulated live environment. That live environment is a gas refinery in a desert location. However, everything you'll see now is applicable in public safety, transportation and commercial sectors as well. There are two demonstrations. The first will be uh, fixing and repairing of equipment that has gone wrong and the automation of that process. The second will be perimeter uh, security and how we can guard our borders more effectively by integrating seismic detectors and live video onto Tetra. We'll now begin the first demonstration and I'll hand over to my colleague, John. So, this is equipment room number one in the gas plant. And behind this door, there's some very sensitive and critical pieces of equipment. Equipment that has to run 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. It's so important that we're receiving live telemetry about this equipment over this ESS SCADA telemetry unit, which has an SRB8000 radio board integrated into it. Telemetry is transmitted over Tetra on the control channel by SDS. We also have each piece of equipment tagged with an RFID tag so that we can monitor repair and maintenance as these jobs come up either as part of scheduled work or if it's reacting to a, a critical fault with the machinery. And that's what we're going to simulate for you now by pressing this red button. In the control room, I can see there's a problem with room number one. What I now need is more information so that I can then assign an engineer who will go and evaluate and repair the fault. I click on room number one, which brings up that further information and the option to dispatch an engineer. I click on dispatch, it loads the details into the application. I now need to decide who's the closest engineer to affect the repair. Fortunately, the radios are GPS enabled and I can see that this engineer is the closest to room number one. I will now click on this engineer and that will automatically send the job over the air and assign it to that engineer's radio. So, the job arrives on my radio in the form of an SDA, which as you know, is a unique Sapura application. And this SDA gives me the opportunity to accept or reject this job. Obviously, I'm going to accept the job, so I press the green key. In the control room, I can see that the engineer has accepted the task and is now en route to room number one to effect the repair. So here we are at equipment room number one. Now this is a very sensitive location, a lot of security, and all of the locks on these doors have a rolling 24-hour code. I don't know what today's code is. Instead of calling into the control room for the code, I can request it over my radio. I simply call up the relevant SDA, decide which room I require, and send that request by pressing the green key. The back end will check that this is a valid request on an open job ticket, and if it's satisfied, will send me today's code, which just happens to be 1234. Now I can enter the room. In the control room, I can see that someone has opened the door to room number one. It's indicated both here and also graphically here. Now that is fine because I'm expecting my engineer to enter room number one to effect the repair. If it was unexpected, I know it's a security breach that must be investigated further. So now I can go inside and repair this piece of equipment. Once the equipment has been repaired to my satisfaction, I've run the diagnostics, everything is working as far as I'm concerned, I'm able to scan the equipment's RFID tag with this Bluetooth wand. This piece of equipment updates the radio and prompts us another SDA, allowing me to update the back end about this piece of equipment's operating condition. And as we can see, I have options here. I think it's operating well, so I'll update the back end to that effect. So as far as the system is concerned, the engineer has approved this piece of equipment, but now we want the equipment itself to report its condition over the air using telemetry. And we can simulate that by pressing the green key. Once the work is completed, I can close the door and the system is automatically reset. 
In the control room, I can see that the engineer has completed his task. But I'm also waiting for another piece of information, and that is that the equipment itself is back online, which will be reported via the telemetry unit. Now I can see that the equipment has come back online because it's been reported via the telemetry unit. And finally, the door is closed, the lights have gone green, and the engineer has completed his task. So in conclusion, this is a very efficient way of managing a workforce. No voice calls were made, it's entirely managed by SDS, applications and third-party devices. What you also have is a full audit trail of all the actions that took place, which is very important for an organisation from an auditing and from a management perspective. Thank you very much. In the second demonstration, we have a solution whereby we can protect borders and perimeters using seismic nodes and live video to enhance the security for organisations in vulnerable places. So, how does it work? Well, these seismic nodes are placed at intervals along the border. These nodes work into what we call the master node, which is connected to this encoder. You also have a video camera, which can be also connected into the encoder. And what we've done is integrate a link between the encoder and a Tetra radio. This allows the seismic data to be passed via a multi-stop packet data link to the back-end control room and also a live video feed also to be passed over that data link. So let's see it in action. I'm now going to make this master node live. And the node I have here is part of that live network. I'm going to simulate human movement along the perimeter and very shortly, the control room will detect this presence. We can see in the control room there's been a perimeter breach. And because the nodes are GPS recorded when they're placed, we also know the location of the breach. But I want my workers to go to a safe place, which is why a message has been sent to all radios, the workers now go to a safe place to avoid being taken hostage. And by accepting that on the radio, the control room knows which workers are now heading to a safe place. The second action that needs to occur is to determine is this a real threat or a false alarm. And we can do that because we know where the perimeter breach has occurred, so we can select the correct camera and ascertain the threat. Now this is a live video stream over Tetra using multi-stop packet data, and you can see the throughput here in kilobits per second. Now this low-res image is great for observing a fence line. If there is a person or an object of interest, we can enhance it by doing this action. I click on Enhance. It brings up a further screen and I can drag a box over the area of interest. Release. And now, because the frames are buffered in the encoder, the radio can download over Tetra an enhanced image area. Once the image is downloaded, I can then save it as a JPEG, because the final action I need to do is to push this image onto the security team's radios so they know what they're dealing with. And I'll do that using this application. I select send image from your computer and I drag the image that has already been enhanced into this application and you can see it's the same image. It's only this portion I'm interested in which I'll highlight now and now I can push this selected image onto the radio and there the image is now on the security team's radio and they can take the next appropriate actions. So in conclusion this provides a robust security solution for organizations in vulnerable areas that need perimeters and borders protecting. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope it's been of interest.